We're gonna open four packages from the P.O. Box. Well, I don't know who it's from, because it's it's from Amazon. Oh, chat. Yo, I love Pez. We got a Luigi Pez. Uh, next is something that says fragile, do not drop. Oh, I think it's from Roni. Ah, I can't open the bag. Ah. Uh... We all collectively do There's a root microdose right there. Yeah, sometimes, I, I don't know why, but sometimes I have to reset my capture card. Oh, we won't, we won't reset there. Uh, hiya. Sometimes people say hi, and I just say hi back. Not mention their name. And they just have to figure out that I'm saying hi to them. Hi! Does anyone care about the baseball this year? It's really the Dodgers are still... Dude, I'd still rather the Dodgers won the Masters. Um... No, but I don't think anyone has cared about baseball in a long time besides people that, like, you know, played baseball forever. I mean, I played baseball through high school. I still don't care about baseball. I just... Ugh. I'm not looking forward to T-ball season. I, I like, yeah, I like going to a baseball game, but like for everything that's not really the game, you know what I mean? Uh, like we got, we got like partial season tickets to a minor league team. I haven't played any custom levels in order yet, but I will soon. I'm always talking to you. Football, I'd rather stay at home and watch football on TV uh, for professional football. College football, I'd rather be there, but professional football, I'd much rather stay at home than go to a professional football game. Even my Lions, I mean, like, I'll go because I don't get to go, like, often, like, if I'm back at home. But, um, yeah, I like the River Cats, yeah. My early games are lit. You love your NFL season tickets? I feel like I'm missing so much football when I'm at a football game. Yeah. <laughs> also, depending on where your tickets are, um, Helen, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like there's a lot of bad seats in football, at football games. Field level? Okay, you might enjoy it a little bit more than, than me. Wait, wait, you got field level tickets? What team? What team? What yard line? Texans? It's a nice stadium. Fun year for you. I guess it's been a real fun year for you. How, ha how happy are you guys that you're not stuck with Deshaun Watson? Then your wait for those things? Yeah, my dad's on a wait for the Packers. And he's like, he's like, well, I'm never gonna get to buy the tickets, but you might one day. And I'm like, what the fuck am I gonna do with Packers season tickets, Dad? Yeah, it's like 40, it's like 40 years. So he put me he put himself on the list, and then when he dies, I get to take his place, but it's like... And, and it's also, like, it's something that's so, like... Because I understand how, like, hard it is to get Packers season tickets, it's like... When it calls my name, I'm gonna be like... Ugh. But I live in California. Not 
an easy place to get to Green Bay, Wisconsin from, you know? <gasps> I like college football live because I think the atmosphere is a little bit more and I don't care as much about the rest of college football that's happening. But the NFL, I literally watch every fucking game. And before you're like, what do you mean you watch every game? I mean, if I don't see the game, I watch the replay of the game where you just see the plays and no huddles or timeouts or anything. I watch every game. Yes. Yeah, red zone. How about college hockey? What are we even talking about here, dude? Uh, there's not really, you don't really debate whether it's better to watch college hockey on TV or live because college hockey's not really on TV ever. Uh, I think hockey is the biggest step up from TV to live, though. I will, I will say that. I think hockey is like easily the best step up from TV into live the experience. Yeah. I don't know why hockey hockey I think it's just it's a it's harder to follow on TV than it should be still. And I'm not saying bring back the blue streak and or the red line and the blue streak. I'm just saying that the red line and the blue streak didn't hurt. The glow puck? I loved the glow puck. No, Chesbutt. NFL games live are incredible. I've been to plenty of NFL games live, and I don't think it's a particularly better experience than sitting on my couch myself. Don't get me wrong, I'm not like turning it down. Like if someone's got, it's just like, I'm not also like seeking out tickets. Um, I totally respect people though. Um, I think especially like season ticket holders for football too, a lot of it is like, the vibe of the people around you. You know what I mean? And that's the part that I like. Like, I like, like, high-fiving strangers. Yeah. Yeah, it's the vibe. Definitely, absolutely the vibe. Yeah, I think college football... Like, the vibe's so... Each school's got its own, like, little chants and shit. And then you have the student section that's just, like, kind of wild. It's fun to see them all operate as a unit. Um, the band and things. For me, college football is a little bit more fun experience. And I also, like, I only care about one college football team. Whereas... The NFL, like, I want to watch the whole league. Yeah. Yeah, it has a more soccer, yeah, European soccer atmosphere. Love Lambo. I've seen game, I've seen Dallas, Lambo. Uh, I've been to lots of stadiums, lots of really good stadiums. Um, but, yeah. First hockey game I ever went to, my favorite player scored five goals. And it was just like, that was a moment for me. You're nervous for the Finns on Sunday? Uh, big game for the Cowboys and the Dolphins, honestly. Damn it. Uh, no. Uh, my favorite player is Sergei Fedorov growing up. Sergey Fedorov and Chris Osgood were my favorite hockey players. Um, my sister has a autograph stick from Chris Osgood that he gave to one of her friends 
when they went to a game because they were hooking up. Not my sister, her friend was hooking up with them. And then they sat front row and after the game gave them their stick. You are Eric Lindros fan? Well, Eric Lindros doesn't play for the Red Wings, so it would be weird for me to be a fan of his. today. Do you think Fedorov still is the highest paid single season? Maybe. Uh, yeah, I used to work uh, arena football. I used to work for the Denver team intern because if you were an intern for the Nuggets, you did arena football and nuggets, and if you were interned for the Avalanche, you did the Avalanche and the lacrosse team. Um, I always had a really good time. Yeah, I always had a really good time with that. We weren't talking about Detroit. Oh, no, you can talk about whatever. Yeah, no, you're fine. I just hate Eric Lindros. The Marble Olympics? I don't know what that is. Oh, wait. Shit, I'm an idiot. Fucked up. Fucked up, chat. Where's Waluigi? Where's Waluigi? Waluigi. Waluigi. So Olympic events done with marbles? Sounds awesome. Tennis is crazy to watch live. I've never been to a live tennis event. But I've definitely like caught myself like watching tennis on TV, even though like I wouldn't say I have any interest in tennis. Like, I'll put it on on a Sunday. Is Monty Williams a bad coach? Yes. I don't think it's a good sign when your team makes the playoffs and another team still fires you. Does that make sense? I don't think that's a good sign of you being a great coach. Tennis is dead in your town. It's all about pickleball. Yeah, pickleball is huge. Well, pickleball is all the fun of tennis without any of the um, running. You know? It feels better than ping pong. Why am I fucking this level up today, Chad? I feel like I'm behind my other run that we ended. She just stuck with the first run. You're a runner though? Alright, alright, I get it. You know how you know how someone's a runner? If you're at a party, you, you know how you find the runners? Don't worry, they'll tell you. <laughs> I'm so just fucking with you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just messing with you right now. Oh, uh, that was too far. Good jump. Uh, my buddy Chris is a marathon runner. He started running marathons after he got diagnosed with MS. 
he was like, he was like, what's one thing I'm not going to be able to do one day, you know what I mean? Like, so that's why he started. Um, motherfucker's healthy as shit, dude. Crushes it. He's getting really good. The dude ran a thousand miles this year, chat. The motherfucker ran a thousand full miles this year. Fucking Forrest Gump style. This month, he's already ran like 120. And he lives in Lake Tahoe, so it's not like he's like... He's a, this is outdoor miles. That's not even counting treadmill shit. Because he has a treadmill, too. Goddamn psychopath. I hate when we hang out. Because I feel like everyone judges me on how out of shape I am, despite not having a debilitating disease, and how in shape he is, despite having one, you know? He's, he wants to do an ultra marathon. The 50 mile ones. Yeah, they just look at me and they're like, oh, so what do you do? You play video games. Ultras are just, yeah. Someone told me, I, I have a couple people that at Red Bull that do ultra marathons. And they told me that like, if you can run a marathon, you can run as long as you want as long as you're putting the right things in your body for the whole time. You'll be fine as long as you still run and you put the right things in your body. When you stop running and rest is when everything sucks. Yeah. Uh, the only people that are really impressed by the Red Bull sponsorship though are like my snowboard buddies, you know? Everyone else is just like, most, a lot of people just like straight up don't believe me. Like real talent. Real talent. I'm doing wonderful. You were in a death metal band for 10 years in the early 2000s. You had a couple tours sponsored by. Gross! By Poison? I do a bunch of stuff that other streamers don't do, so Red Bull must like that. Um. Well, Red Bull enables that. Yeah, I mean, I think. I think, um. What do I want to say? Not everyone takes advantage of the doors that being a Red Bull athlete gives you, right? The problem is, is that you definitely have to, you know, put that into like, you gotta be someone that has an idea, right? Yeah. And I think that's why our relationships work so well. Is because I have a lot of really, I have tons of ideas. Most of them are really, really bad. But I have a company that'll, you know, at least let me try a really bad one every once in a while. Like I thought Fall Mania was a horrible idea. The Q 
cube idea was a genius? That was um, not my idea. So uh, I got to give a shout out to Walshy, of always, and uh, Kayvon, who is with Red Bull, like their media department. Um, and it's something that he worked on for a long time before even I came on. And then there was a company that like does ARGs and stuff, and they kind of came up with like all that stuff. Um, honestly, I just I really hope we do settle the score again next year, maybe even with more people. Um, because I feel like I feel like now that we've done it once, I feel like there's so many cool things we could do, you know. Um, and it's just how it is like no matter what you do when you do it the first time there's always going to be things like oh now i know i do this differently you know yeah that sucked have i seen the wonka movie no i haven't seen the wonka movie high rivers rivers high 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 Mother motherfucker, I'm literally speedrunning a game. I can't, if you say hi 30, se 30 times in five seconds, I'm not gonna see it. If you want, if you want a just chatting stream, come back later when I'm playing GTA. Yeah, right now I'm learning new colors. Nothing in GTA will ever type the bank heist with cameos? Probably not. The fact that I even read chat. Why is the level called VVVVVV? That one's not called VVVVVVVVV. This one's called MMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMMM
I didn't find them all. Uh, I think the only thing I missed was like different, a couple different portraits probably. Upside down Chuck Gate, it's good. Yeah, I would put, that's what I would do. I would put just add in new secrets. Oh, I'm getting frustrated with myself. Huh? Not frustrated with the game, but with myself. I should be playing much better than this. Uh, hey Julie, how's it going? You know what it is, Chad? It's Christmas. It's Christmas. I'm I'm in I'm in Christmas mode. I'm in holiday vacation stream mode. I should be playing Ski Free. Yo, Ski Free was a lit game. I loved Ski Free. Like, to find out that you could actually outrun the goddamn, um, Yeti as an adult really made me mad, though. I always wish they made a snowboard free. That's the worst part about computers now, is they don't come with some shitty games on them already. Besides Solitaire. Y'all don't know how lit Windows 3.1 was. You Windows 95 loving bastards. They come with Candy Crush now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, the pinball game was lit. Windows 98's the goat? Hover? I remember the game where you, like, were a mouse and had to kill cats. Um, we just gotta finish a run. Oh god, Jezball! Jezball was amazing! Rodent's Revenge, that's what it was. Yeah, Jazz Ball was good, man. Hot drinks. Uh, I don't remember that, but I remember, like, I definitely played more Geometry Wars than Project Gotham Racing. And I would say my playthrough of Shenmue probably had as much time playing, like, Outrun and Darts as it did. Any sort of Shenmueing, or just driving the forklift. Why does this game hate me today? 
What have I been doing to this game? The Navy snowboarding sucks. I hate every snowboarding video game. There's, there's been nothing but mediocre snowboarding video games. And before you look, SSX. SSX is a fucking weird arcade game. Can't flip your goddamn snowboard. Hate it. We don't even have the Dave Mira triple X of snowboard games. I guess Sean Palmer's snowboarding, but I'm not a huge fan of that one particularly. That's offensive. Uh, I didn't like Steep. No, I hate Steep. They killed, they killed one of my friends making that game. Doing promotional shots. Yeah, I don't like them at all. Really hate that game, in fact. I like Shredders. Not only that, Steep um, stole stole the likenesses of professional snowboarders, basically, and didn't pay them. Amp 2 is pretty good, actually. Amp 3 and 1 suck. Oh, I really hate Riders Republic. Yeah, first of all, you guys are naming a bunch of arcade games. I've never gotten my skate of this. It's offensive you hate on snowboards like that? I'm not hating on snowboards. I, as a snowboarder, think all snowboarding video games have been ass. 1080's a racing game. It's not a snowboarding game. Um, Shredders is the closest we've gotten, and Shredders just has so many, like, just little things that- Oh my god, there's mountains in the background. Little things that make it, like, not a great game. It's just a really good game. Remember SS Tricky being fun? It's like y'all don't even listen to me talk. Is this what my wife feels like all the time? Where she says something and then I completely just say it? Like then they, she just repeats it? Something or I just repeat something back to her that had nothing to do with anything? Or something that I had ar or she had already addressed? No, you can't. Oh, uh, maybe you can. I guess I don't know. I guess I haven't tried to. SSX Tricky is just, like, it's, it's a fine, fine thing, but it's not like a snowboard game. Like, like, uh, like the way Tony Hawk is a skateboard game, or the way that like Skate is a skateboard game. I want, I want my skate. That's what I want. I want my version of skate for snowboards. Uh, Riders Republic is ass. Granola, thank you for 26 months. I hate Riders Republic, honestly. None of it makes sense. You never, you can never fall in Riders Republic. You're just literally just like. I don't know, you might as well just throw a ball up in the air. Are the splits off? No, I'm just bad. Wasn't there a Sean White game? It was meh. SSX3? Dude, all the SXX games have been wild, cartoony, arcade, weird stuff. 
I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that's not... They're not like snowboards. Why not go make it then? Oh, oh, get, just sh shut the fuck up, naval plane. Shut the... F Jesus Christ. I don't make games, all right? I think someone would make it. Nobody buys snowboarding games. 1080 is a racing game, bro. And you know what's a better racing game on the Nintendo 64? Beetle Adventure Racing. Why don't you go make it then? I don't make snowboarding. I don't make video games. Beetle Adventure Racing would be so good. You feel it'd be hard to have an open world snowboard game? You gotta have an open world snowboard game where riding the lifts is also... Wow, man. I'm making these little, like, little mistakes that are coming from me just trying to go a little too fast today. Late to the conversation, but have you played? I hate you so much. I, I literally hate you. I hate you. Uh, one of my friends died uh, doing the steep promotional materials. They had, yeah. I don't like steep, no. But also, it's a, it's a shitty game. It's also a shitty game. Like, I've played it. I also think it's a bad game. <laughs> I literally said that five minutes ago. I also think it's a bad game, though. I think it's not a fun game. And I also don't think it really has anything to do with snowboarding. I don't know. He did say he was late to the conversation. I know, but this is that is the that's the moment where we have to stop the conversation. When we go right back to the middle. F Zero X is the best racing game. Beetle Adventure Racing. I'll stand by Beetle Adventure Racing being so good. Look up skier dies doing promotional materials. Proceed. Oh wait, no, I don't want to do that. Oh, I'm screwing up so much. Red Bull athlete. Steep also stole likenesses from snowboarders. Yeah, and then didn't pay them. They negotiated with them, made character models that look like them, and then stopped negotiating with them, and just didn't pay them. I know two people, two people have told me that story before. Hate Steve. Ubisoft game. I feel like I'm gonna have to do another run today, chat, because I feel like I've got more. I've got time to save today. That story's sad? I know, isn't it? Isn't it?
Yeah, but even if that didn't happen, I still wouldn't like Steve. Just for the record. Um, can I tell you something that drives me crazy about Steve? Actually, is that the snowboarders character models are all fucked up. They have their snowboarders' shoulders facing forward all the time. Like they're like they're racing snowboarders. Like they have pointed they have pointed shoulders. They're like face out like this and not completely sideways. Like you want your shoulders parallel with your knees and you just turn your neck, right? That's it. And so that really bothers me. I can't get past that. Yeah, as a snowboarder, it's not, I, can't, I literally can't get past that. I actually think Cruising USA is horrible. I think San Francisco Rush is better. I think Daytona USA is way better. Yeah, I think Cruising USA is actually a really bad game. You remember the skiing flash game where you had... All right, new new topic, new topic. No, I have I have way too many large opinions on video games that happen in snow. Uh, there's this one snowboard game called Stoked that came out for 360. That was actually pretty decent. What? How did that happen? Topic circle all the way back to ski free. I know that's that's how you know that's how you know we need a new topic of conversation. It, it, it happens. It happens in every every Twitch conversation. Someone says something. I go on a rant. We talk about it for ten minutes, and then we go right back to the thing that made the rant start. It's gonna be funny when the Lions and Rams play each other in the playoffs. Dude, the Rams are, I, I would not want to play the Rams right now. I feel like the Rams are sn kind of sneaky good, actually. Yeah. They do, they look sneaky good. I know. Safford's been playing really, really, really good football. Uh, Puka pretty much just ended my playoff chances. <gasps> I beat that entire level during an ad break. Oh, I wish I would have beaten two levels during an ad break, to be honest with you. Um, listen, um, I'm sorry that you get ads on Twitch. Um, I have to run Twitch ads. I have a contract that says I have to run them. Uh, so I can't do anything about that, right? Um, I have to run three minutes of them an hour. I can't help it. I'm sorry. Yeah. How's Taylor's boyfriend? Is he any good? He's the greatest of all time at his position. And I think that I think that's I'm pretty comfortable saying that. Who's the greatest snowboarder of all time? Travis Rice. Yeah. Not even close. Travis Rice is the greatest snowboarder of all time. I don't even think I don't even think it's close. Maybe like maybe Mark McMorris I'd put after him at this point, honestly. Mark McMorris is 
done everything that he can do competition wise you know you just i don't know if mark mcmorris has that like legendary video part that like travis has but yeah he'd probably be he'd probably be like if i if anyone was gonna unseat travis i think I'd, i would say mark mcmorris yeah what about Sean White? Sean White is the greatest vert ramp, like the greatest person that's ever rode a board on a vertical wall ever, right? And, and I would say that's period, like snowboarding, skating, surfing, he can do all three. He's amazing on a vertical wall. Um, but Sean, but snowboarding is way more than competitions, right? It's so much more. Competitions are honestly not even that big a deal in, in the grand scheme of what I consider a great snowboarder. Um, Cheers. Thanks for all the entertainment this year. Um. Uh, thank you for the, the monies. Uh, I don't know if I'd put Sean White in my top 10, even, of snowboarders, um, all time. As a snowboarder. Which sounds, which probably, like, if you don't follow snowboarding, you're like, that is absolutely ridiculous. Um, I'm just talking freestyle snowboarding? No, I'm just talking, like, the whole genre of snowboarding. You know? Who would be my top 10? I think you gotta put context into like what they did, the impact of it. You know what, you know what I love Sean White for? I feel like Sean White helped make helmets incredible. But yeah, I, I mean, I would say he's probably, he would probably make my top 15, but he wouldn't make my top 10, no. Yeah. Oh shit, I forgot the other castle exit. I'll do it on the way back. Yeah, snowboarding's just a lot more than the X Games. Oh shit, and Sean's really good at winning the X Games, you know what I mean? Uh, Jeremy Jones, Jib Jones, or Big Mountain Jones? Which Jeremy are you talking about? Actually, I'd probably have both of them in my top 10, to be honest with you. Uh, JP Walker would be in my top 10. Tornstein. John Jackson. Uh, maybe DCP. I don't know if I'd have Xavier Delarue up there. Maybe. Mark McMorris, Seb. They'd both be in there. Uh, I don't like Olympic snowboarding. It's judged by skiers. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't like a lot of judge snowboarding in general. Um, because so much of it is person spun more, they're better. When person spun more looks like ass spinning. These are my top three sketchy snowboarders. Me, my buddy Joe. Whew. snowboarding events did you check out? Watch uh, a movie called That's It, That's All. Even 10 years later, That's It, That's All is still like the best snowboarding movie in my opinion. 12 years later, 15 years later. God, how long has it been since that movie came out? Art of Flight's good if you want to watch a nature documentary with snowboarding in it. But I like... Um, that's it, that's all. Better than that, or third face.
Uh, yeah, I like Art of Flight too. I just like that's that's all way more than Art of Flight. Out Cold, Out Cold's hilarious. I love Out Cold. I think Out Cold's a great fucking snowboard movie. Yeah, I think that's a wonderful snowboard movie, honestly. Out Cold has a lot of real snowboarders that worked on the movie too. Yeah, I actually really like Out Cold. Yeah, if you like, if you like, if you like Warren Miller stuff, Party On, you'll love That's It, That's All, and uh, Art of Flight. You'll really like both of them, honestly. Um, it's very, they're, they're movies with snowboarding in them, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, uh, I would say this, like, Sean White is the most decorated um, snowboarder of all time. And he's also the only snowboarder that 90% of people can name. You know what I mean? But his career has been dedicated. His whole way of snowboarding is just different than I would say 99.9% .9 of people that snowboard want to snowboard, you know? But that's not, I'm not, so like, I think people think like I'm taking away from him, but I'm not, it's not that at all. He's very, he's a very great competition snowboarder. You know what I mean? But it's just a lot, lot, lot bigger than that. They've had, there's lots of videos of him like in Japan and it's just like, whoa, bro, you are not a power rider and that's okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. You'll take Rodney Mullen over Tony Hawk? I think that's pretty fair. Yeah. I think that might be a good, probably like a good example though, even. Is like, skaters, like, nobody's taking anything away from Tony Hawk, right? But if you're like a real, like, kind of historian of it, you know Rodney Mullen is responsible for so fucking much. Yeah. That's the same thing I'm saying about white, LMAO. What do you mean? Yeah, I'm saying Travis Rice would be Rodney Moe in this situation. Hawk was the same, just for Vert. Mm, Tony Hawk's got a bit more cultural impact than that. I would say. For nothing else, the video games. But yeah, I think that's a... I, I just said that's a really good example, you know? Like, I'm not taking anything away. I think you think I'm making a different argument than I'm making? Yeah. Tony Hawk's contributions are a video game in a 900. See... You're wrong about that. And I know, like, Andy Carton, what is Christian Asoy's accomplishments then? <laughs> like, I'm sorry, with all due respect. That's not true. Like, like Tony Hawk was winning competitions in the 80s, you know what I mean? Tony Hawk was only ha- Dude, there wasn't, when Tony Hawk was skating, there wasn't anything else. What are y'all talking about? Tony Hawk was winning competitions before people knew how to ollie.
Tony Hawk invented the McTwist. What? Get out of here. Or is it a soy who invented the McTwist? That's like saying Babe Ruth the goat. Ooh, actually, you know what? I kind of, I mean, I, I, I would make the argument that Babe Ruth is the greatest player that's ever played the game. Um, and yeah, while he might not be as talented as players that play, to, play today, Babe Ruth was so far ahead of anybody he played against. It, it's, this one's a rather hard one for me, actually. Because generally I, I, I am like, oh, well, yeah, obviously, like Babe Ruth couldn't fucking hit Randy Johnson, right? You know what I mean? I agree with that assessment. But Babe Ruth, Babe Ruth hit 60 home runs, and like the next closest guy hit 26. Like, that he's just so head and shoulders above everyone else that he played against at that time. That makes, that's what makes Babe Ruth so ridiculous. You know what I mean? That one's harder for me, but at the same time, like, I haven't seen Babe Ruth play. I just know his stats, you know? So it's hard for me to say, was it that impressive while you were watching it? Yeah, that one's harder for me. Uh... Honestly, the only sport that I feel 100% confident on saying he's the greatest that's ever done it and no one else is even close, and this is his dumb conversation, out of every sport, is hockey. Yeah. That's, that one's easy to me. <sighs> no way, Wayne Gretzky played in it. Bro. Bro, Wayne Gretzky has more assists than anyone else has points. It's not even, it's not even a, like, it's not even anything. Yeah, I was going to say, the top scored brothers in hockey are the Gretzky's, and Wayne, Bro Wayne Gretzky's brother has four points. Pooh's wife? I don't think that's my wife in there. Yeah, Wayne's the goat of goats. Yeah, he's, he's to me the... Wait, up here? Uh, Pat, Pat, I think you're wrong. I, we, Patrick Mahomes is the greatest, the greatest football player I've ever seen with my eyes, and I'm including Tom Brady in that. Yeah. Michael Phelps in swimming. Uh, I don't know. Is Katie Ledecky like? Is she gonna get up there? I feel like after that. Olympic sports are harder for me because I don't know anything about them other than four years. Like it's hard, it's harder for me to give a, a educated opinion about that. And unlike unlike most people that talk sports, I don't like to give uneducated opinions. <laughs> like like when motherfuckers come in here when we were talking about. Oh shit! I forgot. Whoops. I screwed up, chat. Um, I screwed up twice, actually. I didn't do Bonsai Barrage, either. Fuck. Yeah, we definitely gotta do another one. Yamir Yager's debatable. Dude still playing? Well then, Gordy Howe's better than Yamir Yager. He played till he was 60. Get out of here. Chess, uh, Magnus Carlsen or Garrett Kasparov, I'd say are one and two. I'd say that's easy to pick out one and two. 
Like, it is easy for me in NBA, like, it's Jordan and LeBron. But it's harder to debate those two. <laughs> You're a good point, Party On. Yeah, but Schmitty, Katie Ledecky's about to do another Olympics, bro. Yeah. You're talking about someone whose career is still going versus someone whose career is not done. So, can't be like, blah, blah, blah. I will say we have a tendency to romanticize the past to sports fans and just as, as in general. We romanticize the past a bit too much. But I think that's just old people. Is Lance Armstrong the greatest cyclist? I don't know nothing about cycling. All I know is during Lance Armstrong's peak, I never thought I would see him on reality TV shows with people from Vanderpump Rules, but here we are. Okay, here's the okay, here's my problem though with like Michael Phelps has 23 Olympic gold medals, next closest in any sport is blah blah blah. But like you have so many opportunities to win medals in swimming. Alright? Motherfuckers that are playing basketball in a two-week tournament to win a gold medal can't do that. I'm sorry, triathletes can't win seven gold medals in one Olympics. So I think there's a lot more to that particular conversation. Even track and field can't win that many. That's not really fair. That's always, it's always gonna be a swimmer that has that record. Swimming has so many opportunities to win gold. I'm not saying it's not impressive. I'm just saying it's, it's not, you can't just, you can't just say like a blah, blah, blah. And that, and that be an argument is what I'm saying. Right? Yeah, if, that's, a, that's a good point. If Usain Bolt could get a, a, another medal for swimming forward than one for swimming backwards, both 100 and 200, like, you know? Olympics needs patch notes? Yeah. Who's the best gymnast? Oh, Simone Biles, yeah. I mean, she's gonna, she's gonna win again. Yeah, that's the hard part with like comparing swimming as an Olympic sport to other Olympic sports. Or just why like I am just able to say like, I just don't know enough about Olympic sports to make any sort of grand declaration of statements too often. I don't think Michael Phelps is head and shoulders I don't think he dominated as hard as Babe Ruth dominated. That's, that would be my general thesis that I, I said. But I could, I could be wrong on that, but. no defense in swimming as you splash your opponent right right in the face
No! Uh, no, I think championships in a lot of sports are a bit... Oh, I don't think they're, they don't mean anything, but I do think they're a bit overrated in team sports. Yeah, I think people overrate championships a bit. I don't, I'm not saying they don't mean anything, uh, but I think just playoff success in general is a fine stat for that. I don't know enough about Smash to make those. You don't care what anyone says, the steroid era of baseball was fun to watch. Um, I'm actually super against the whole, like, oh, we should just allow steroids in sports argument because 20 year olds don't realize the impact that those things are going to have on their life at 60. And they're not going to be able to make a good sound decision. Yeah. Also, Aaron Boone hitting 65 home runs was super cool. Not wrong about the Roys, but they did save baseball. Yo, hot take. Baseball wasn't going anywhere. If it wasn't the home runs, it would have been something else. Like, good stories happen in sports. Yeah. Good stories happen in sports. thinking of Brain Brady Anderson? Was it Brett Boone? One of the Boons. One of the Boons hit fucking 50, bro. The one who was playing for the Mariners? Didn't he win an MVP? Yeah, Brett Boone. These guys that don't hit 10 home runs their whole career, suddenly hitting 50. Brady Anderson hitting 50 as a leadoff guy. Oh, come on. No, I, I don't, I don't like the steroid era so much. Reset again, but I feel like I might as we're so close. How do you always re grab the key on that jump when it just gets deleted right away? Um. Pressing jump and run. That's all. It's just a. I have to press run and I have to press jump. So I just press them at the same time. Yeah. It's not. I'm not like trying to bring it with me. I just like. I gotta press run and I gotta press jump. So the earliest I can press run is the same frame as I press jump. And that's gonna grab the key and do it. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like an intentional thing. Thirty-seven home runs, guys. I was being facetious about sixty-five. I was exaggerating. Calm down. Hate the internet. You can't. Sarcasm doesn't exist on the internet. That's what the internet's killing. Gen Z, you're killing sarcasm. Jesus.
Say what you want. I may have murdered the diamond industry, but you guys are murdering sarcasm. That's fine. It's our is all millennials have anymore. It's our coping mechanism. Oh, I know. Millennials are about to get fucked too. Is this with housing prices again. Again? Yeah, again. Uh, once, once the interest rates, guys, this is such a boring conversation, such an old man conversation. Yeah, once the interest rates come down, dude, prices are gonna pop again. Two thousand eight? No, the opposite. Not gonna be a housing. the The housing market's never. It's never gonna two thousand eight again. Um, that was a once in a lifetime thing. In general, sorry, I shouldn't say that. I'm not a, I'm not a fucking economist by any means, clearly, but, um, I bet a real estate agent in chat can confirm what I'm saying. This is not financial advice. Never say never. Yeah, never say never, but, like, it's going to be hard to have a bunch of people with... That's why you've been waiting to buy a house? You're screwed. You you can't wait. You can't wait. You, waiting is not going to help you. You're going to be way... Yeah, things are only going to go up. That's what I'm saying. So, all right. Here, here's my logic on this, right? Okay, we, we have... Hear me out. Hear me out. All right? And this is all shit I didn't understand before I bought a house. Now that I own a house, I understand it all, which is kind of bullshit. Yeah, numbers go up. So, housing prices blew up in price during COVID for two reasons. One, we all wanted to have a better prison, right? We were like, oh, we might be stuck in our house more. We want a better prison, right? So everyone was like, I'm going to buy a house. I want a better prison, okay? Secondly, uh, interest rates were at insanely low prices, right? So you could buy more house for less money. So you wanted the prison, and you're like, I want my new prison now. Oh, this, it's only going to cost me, since the rates are so low, my monthly payment isn't going to be that bad, I'll offer more. You know? Yeah. Um, and then, rates went way, way, way up. But you know what didn't go down? Prices. Just over the last few years, they just stayed stagnant. So if prices would have went down, then maybe. But now interest rates are coming down again. And so they're gonna go up. This had nothing to do with politics, chat. That has nothing to do with politics. Uh, XWD, do you know what's go been going up for the last three months? Yeah. Gotta wait till all the boomers die off. Ha! They're gonna reverse mortgage their houses to pay for their fucking elder care. Wrong way. I went the wrong way. Yeah, I went the wrong way. And leave you with no inheritance? I accepted that a long time ago. 
No, I mean, there is gonna be... Boomers dying is gonna be, like, millennial things. We'll all have stuff when we're 16. And then we'll hoard it away from everyone else. It's our turn, baby. I can't wait to prevent... I can't wait to prevent progress of a future generation. Suck it. I'm gonna hoard the fuck out of all the wealth when I'm 60. <laughs> I saw you can... do this? Yeah, that's sick. Oh, wait. Well, how do you get in it, then? Mistakes were made. It's gotta go somewhere. throw and then yeah I gotta I gotta figure that one out housing prices were down in your area I wouldn't say that's a good sign and that's an area you want to buy in is your town dying or are you just looking at different places Probably. Is your t population dwindling in your town? I feel like you always buy, like, I feel like that's the thing though. I feel like no matter what at a house you are gonna buy it like a record high, right? I think we're, I think maybe like because we lived through a housing crisis, we think that they're more, like, housing collapses are maybe a bit more common than they ever were. Well, the thing about buying with a high interest rate is you can always renegotiate it. Later on, when interest rates come down. The thing with buying at a higher price... Like, you'd rather buy at a high, a high interest rate and a low price than a high price and a low interest rate. Because you have more flexibility that way. This has been the most boring conversation. I'm so sorry. Uh, BTK, thank you so much. Yeah, I deserve no subs for this kind of boring-ass conversation. I know. These are all things I wish I would have learned when I was, uh, before I did it. Leave us all depressed before- I'm not leaving you depressed before Christmas. Sorry. No, I bought one a couple years ago. Yeah, I got- I got real lucky in all my- all my house stuff. Yeah, I got super lucky. You heard the housing market's supposed to crash soon? Who told you that? Who told you that? I am telling you that that is wrong. They've been- I've heard that for the- for five years now. What math supports that? Yeah, there's just no math that supports that, unfortunately. We have more people that want to buy than we have homes for sale. Yeah. Honestly, 
I think election years are probably pretty good because no matter what, presidents want to lower rates in election years. Happy holidays. Looking forward to ski free speedruns in 2024. Ski free speedrun beat the Yeti. Thank you for the love, I really appreciate it. Yeah. What are boomers? I don't know what you mean. Lazy. I take keep all the tips, um, but I don't care how you spend your money. However you spend your money makes, I mean, PayPal takes a cut for that one, TCR. Um, split twice. Ooh. Ooh. People call other people boomers all the time. Millennials are boomers. Accept it. Bud's <laughs> gonna burn out too? You got a little bit longer for that. That's a problem you can't control though. There's no point in worrying about that. Yeah, you only worry about problems you... You worry about problems you can control, and then you worry... You try to be the best about problems that take a group effort, right? That's all you can do. Oh, fuck. I'm an idiot. What's going on? There is a, I'm not talking politics, but our president put forth a plan to start converting um, old office buildings into apartments. Uh, Space Cadet Mars and subsidies for companies that do that. Um, so I think that's actually a really good idea to combat both the work from home and that was two, it's a two for one, right? Uh, Space Cadet, but that's not politics. Private ones. You bet boomers are losing their mind? Uh, boomers are always losing their mind, but that's not, that's not their fault, okay? Listen, this is one thing you gotta remember about people over the age of 60, okay? Is that they grew up with leaded gasoline and asbestos everywhere. Their frontal lobes are fucked, right? They can't, they can't be patient. My dad can't, I love my dad so much. He can't sit on a fucking wait for a train. They'll pull out, turn around, go take some other things. Yeah, it's the lead paint, man. It's not even their fault. And you know how I, you know how I can, you know how you can tell? Just go, just next time when your boomer parents are getting upset about something that's not really, just be like, hey, did you ever think that maybe this is the lead paint? And see how defensive they get about that. And then you're like, oh yeah, it's definitely the lead paint. Yeah, absolutely the lead paint. Yeah. Yeah. Why why do you think we're why do you think millennials are so okay with change and boomers are so scared of it? It's not just because they're old. It's because it's literally fucks up their frontal cortex. Yeah. Would our kids say the same thing about us and microplastics? Probably. God! Why does my dad cough all the time? Oh yeah, his lungs are filled with plastic. Kids will all get it too. But 
they'll get that watered down version. Not the 2020 gnarly version. I wish you got a point score for this and it kept your highest points. Humley, you're so dumb. Humley, uh, clearly it's not Humley, and I'm gonna give you an example. I've gotten all my shots. I got one last year. Look at me. I'm great, baby. Definitely healthier than you probably are. Um, you're a weirdo. You're a weirdo. How can you still think? How can you still think that? Like, how many QAnon posts did, did you read where I was like, they're gonna all drop dead, blah, 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 blah. They're gonna all, nah, nah, nah. Shut up. No one's even bothering you to get it anymore. Just shut the fuck up, you weirdo. You're just trying to like justify your dumb shit. Yeah, I know, I know. Everyone in the army gets 4,000 shots. You're telling us me and my servicemen and women are weak? Uh, Romulus's. Yeah, take that shit to Reddit, you fucking weirdo. Yeah. I always know people complain about that. They've clearly never like even traveled out of the country. I barely traveled out of the country and I know that. Yeah, take it to take that shit to Fortune. People don't remember polio anymore. Smallpox vaccine sucked a lot. What? You got it when you were three. <laughs> My kid got it. He was fine. Y'all are weird. The problem with the unlimited amount of information on the internet is that you can find a web page that says anything. And people don't believe facts, they believe confidence. People don't believe facts, they believe confidence, you know? What? I did not know that. Uh, no politics. No politics, bro. Yeah, no politics. No, I don't care about random fucking dumb podcasts that did dumb shit. I don't care about it, right? I just don't care about it. Um... I don't care what crazy thing or conspiracies you all may or may not believe. I don't care what dumb person said on the internet. I don't, I don't just, I just don't care. Um, I'm out of it. You want to talk about video games? You can talk about video game politics. You can talk about Mushroom Kingdom politics, yeah. Yeah, I just don't, I don't care about it. I don't care about dumb talk shows. I don't care about whatever controversy is hot today, unless it is funny. Unless it has some comedy to it. Then I'm like, yeah, let's talk about that. Oh my god. How come Princess is a peach if her dad isn't alive? Who said her dad is dead? 
Yeah. You could probably find a webpage that says Wayne Gretzky isn't the greatest hockey player. I mean, that's that's a good point. Yeah, like Google's biggest problem is it doesn't give you the right answer. It gives you the answer you want. I'll give you politics and Boulder's Gate, yeah. What if your answer is always right? Doubtful. Politics are the worst. They're interesting, but it's impossible to discuss the interesting parts of any with on the internet. It's just not, it's not a possibility. Yeah. You always type Reddit after questions you Google? I don't know if that's better. Uh, rage has longer, yeah, rage is, rage is just some, people are more likely to, um, comment on, on hot takes than nuanced, nuanced thoughts and opinions, you know what I mean? Oh, fuck. Like, watch this, like, watch this, watch chat. Listen, chat, did you guys know that Final Fantasy VII is a horrible game? It is not a good game. It's a bad video game. Right? Look at all these people popping out of the woodworks. Oh, I got them. That weren't chatting before. Because it's such an outrageous opinion. I happen to believe it's true. I also know it's an outrageous opinion. <laughs> I mean like overrated? No, I mean it's just a bad video game. It is not, it doesn't, it doesn't create fun. No, I don't mean overrated. I mean bad. A few neutral jumps at the end there after the damage boost. Um, maybe actually. Probably a really good idea. I don't create fun? Then what are you doing here, bitch? Oh wait, Panty, sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I thought that was a dude saying that. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Penny. I only like, I, I only call dudes bitches. Yeah. You're kind of aroused right now and you don't know how to feel. Oh, did I just awaken something inside of you? You understand the NBA playoffs? What about the in-season tournament? Are you European? You know, like European soccer in-season tournaments and stuff like that? I love the in-season tournament. Oh my God. Why is that so hard to do? The in-season tournament seemed really silly to you. Did you watch it? Do you watch the NBA? Do you care about the NBA? I feel like if you watched the NBA or cared about the NBA, you would have come around. You know what I mean? Like if you don't watch the NBA, and you don't care about the NBA, like I don't think it was ever gonna hit for you. You know what I mean? Hey Pooh, my mom said to tell you hi and thanks for last weekend. Tell her you're welcome. 
and tell her I'm hydrated again, so. Yeah. Aw, tell them Merry Christmas. You didn't get the people being upset about the in-season tournament banner? Yeah, I thought that was weird too. I was like, I was like, that was, it was fucking fun. Yeah, I thought it was fucking fun. I, I will say, I think winning the in-season tournament is officially a bigger deal than winning a division title. Oh, shit. Chat's so quiet now that the housing... I don't think... Is chat quiet? I feel like my chat's moving, bitch. The Pistons ever winning again? Yo, you can... There, It's like 4,000 to 1 odds that they don't win another game. And I think it's much more likely than 4,000 to 1. I always suck at this one. Oh, 40,000 to 1? I think it's much more likely than 40,000. Yeah. Um, honestly, I think I think the Lakers landing an in-season tournament banner is also like important though. I, I think it's like a good thing for the league in general. You only die to forgive my bad takes. I think I think the one thing the in-season tournament needs though is um, like don't get me wrong, the players are willing to play for five hundred thousand dollars. Like fucking Anthony Davis out there, Anthony Davis and LeBron James talking about using five hundred thousand for their Christmas money. Like they're willing to play for that. Um, what I think it needs is like a guaranteed playoff spot or like. You know, like a home game advantage in the finals or something if you make it. Like something that makes it for the fans to be excited about it too. Or like more ping pong balls in the lottery. That's the only thing I could say about the in-season tournament that I'd like to see change, honestly. I really, really enjoyed it. I hope the courts are better next year. That's what the regular season's for? Who cares? They all count as regular season games. That's what I'm saying though. You could win the in-season tournament, you get $500,000 and a few extra rest days. I think that's a big deal for a team trying to win a championship. Oh my god. I that's the only thing I would add to it. Otherwise, I thought the in-season tournament was amazing. Like I want to go to the in-season tournament finals next year. Like I'm thinking about just going. Stupid! I liked the Pro Bowl last year. I like Pro Bowl when it's dodgeball and skills competition and a flag football game. Personally, I really like the flag football game Pro Bowl format. Um, but I think flag football is very, very entertaining. Like, I like flag football a lot. Like, I, I legitimately think flag football is a good sport. I like flag football, and I like that six-on-six -six football they play in high schools. Yeah. Both of those are good, good sports.
shit! The new all-star games are boring. I'm gonna give you a hot take. Every all-star game in every sport's been boring every year since the history and beginning of time. Uh, players are not, they don't want to put up for an all-star team, but they would put up for, they will put up for like their country, Olympic style. They put up for a lot of other different prideful reasons. But representing an Eastern and Western Conference is not one of them. Made, made specifically for me? I mean, kind of, I guess. Uh, Shadow Wancer, thank you so much. I'd say it's made for the entire community. Um, I'm just... I'm just a big name celebrity that Barb wanted to use. But people would actually play his game. <laughs> community in general yeah but um yeah my name's in it ah you wrecked yourself that one I screwed it up by as my fault well, it gave me all the bullets I needed too which is the shitty part Man, I mean, this is it. And sometimes I fuck up, you know? Big Waluigi looks like he has a massive hitbox. No, it's the same, I think. I, I couldn't imagine that being an actual different hitbox.
case scenario. You know, the bullets colliding is bad. <laughs> Who's a great NBA player, even though they didn't have a cool sounding name? I can't think of a great one, but I can think of Tim Duncan is probably the greatest NBA player with the lane. John Stockton's a dope name. What are you talking about? Bill Walton's a dope name. I don't know. Tim Duncan, I think is, but he's, it's Tim Duncan as a basketball player. Though, is pretty good. Yeah, maybe Brandon Roy, but I don't know if he's considered great. Joe Smith was pretty good. Larry Bird. That's an incredible fucking name. Bill, yeah, maybe Bill Russell. I'll give you Bill Russell. Bill Russell might be the closest. Yeah, I think I've changed my mind though. I think I think I've decided Tim Duncan's got a great fucking name. Bull Bull, dude, that's an incredible name. Yeah. Uh, there's a throughout. He gives you a set of algebra problems. And he basically gives you A, B, C, D, and then you got to find um, W, X, Y, Z um, through the algebra problems. And then you count how many of those sprites are out in the world. And then you put the corresponding thing uh, down, left, left, up, right, up, up, right, up, 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 right, up, down, 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 up, wait, uh, left, down, down. Up right, up up right, up 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 right, up down, up down, up down, up down, up down, up down, up down. There we go. I screwed up. I think Isaiah is just a good name. Yeah, actually, honestly, chat. You know what NBA player probably has the most boring name? Great NBA player with the most boring name. It probably is Michael Jordan. That's like a great player. Ah, Jerry West may be good. Ray Allen? Yeah, but Ray Allen's also named Jesus Shuttersworth. I don't know. Joe Smith, uh, Joe Smith was the one that I was gonna say. He was pretty good with a pretty, that's a pretty boring name. Wasn't there a player called Bimbo Coles? Yes, my favorite player is Pooh Richardson. In fact, I liked Pooh Richardson in the NBA so much, that's how I got my name. talking about now we're just talking about great names in sports uh dick trickle dick trickle is the best name in sport all the sports dick trickle race car driver best name not even close yeah aha clinton dicks he's pretty good yeah that's a pretty good one when did he retire
Tank Bigsby's good. I do like that one. I drafted him. I was like, I was like, oh, Travis Etienne gets hurt. Tank Bigsby's gonna be the man. Chipper Jones. Chipper Jones is like, like this is my son Chipper Jones. It's like, oh, he's gonna be a baseball player. I do like Puka Nakua is a great name, actually. I love Puka Nakua. Do I remember the band Two Live Crew? Uh, yeah, man. Overachievers, right there. World be free? Who's who's that? I remember that name, but I can't now I can't remember what sport they played. Shaquille O'Neal because it rhymes. Yeah, any name that rhymes is just inherently pretty good. I think you glitch this section by taking damage while he goes into this section. Blessed me. The gods blessed me there. The gods blessed me. Let's go. Let's go. Shout out to our shout out to our good faithful god. Yeah, I, should, I might submit this chat. Yeah, Puka Nakua has no business being as good as he is, but he is very, very, very good. It's also how you know that you can't, like, we don't know anything, you know what I mean? This is the problem I have with, like, in general, like, scouting and stuff like that, like... Or, like, the, the, what's the, the conversation around Brock Purdy specifically, you know what I mean? Because in my mind, if this was Trey Lance as a second second pick running this offense, um, we wouldn't be having this weird conversation about how good Brock Purdy is, right? But quite frankly, it's not crazy to me that players aren't as good. Some players jump the pack at 23, 24, 25 that weren't maybe as good at 18. Whether it's because physical, getting the right thing, blah, blah, blah. Let's go. 154, though. Really good time. Love me! 